everybody, and welcome to Nightline. I am your host. I am Annie T. Broughton, and I am so happy and delighted to be in your homes on this evening. And we have a wonderful program lined out for you tonight. We're going to have a wonderful time. I give God all the praise tonight. We do have uh, some amazing guests that's going to be with me on Nightline tonight. We have Pastor Sam and Lulu Rivera. Oh my God, and I tell you, we're going, God is going to use them and we, they're going to speak into your lives tonight. We also have Mr. Kenny and his beautiful wife, Samara Smith. And also Mr. Kenny is going to be our musical guest tonight. So as I always say, call someone and ask them to tune in to Nightline tonight. We do have prayer partners, so feel free to call in and just let us know that you're enjoying the program. If you need prayer tonight for anything at all, just feel free to call in. I do have a scripture I want to share for your hearing tonight. And it's lifted from 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. And it reads, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Oh my God, what a, what a scripture, what a word from the Lord. And so we know that the word talks about faith, hope, and love. Uh, faith, hope, and charity. And the greatest of these is love or charity. So what I want you to do tonight, since we're going to be talking about love, guess what? Whenever I hold up this little balloon, this little, yeah, this is a balloon. Whenever I hold that up, I want you to tell somebody at home that you love them, okay? Okay, because that's what we're going to be sharing tonight, love. We're gonna, we want love all in the atmosphere, love all around us. You know, the Bible says that love is patient. So we're going to be talking about that tonight. We're going to be talking about that with Lulu Rivera and her husband, Pastor Sam. She wrote two books. Uh, well, she's written several books. She's the author of Exposing. Satan's Agenda on Women. Uh, she also wrote a book, Hellmates and Helpmates, Wives in the Bible. So we know that Lulu was with us about a year ago, right? <laughs> and her husband was in the audience. But tonight, he's going to be on the set with us. And we're going to go a little bit deeper into the Hellmates and Helpmates, Wives in the Bible. We want to hear what he's got to say about that. So again, call somebody and ask them to tune in. Tonight, we're getting ready to go to our awesome musical guest, Kenny Smith, and he's going to be sing, singing Amazed by Your Love. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus, for we are amazed by your love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I am amazed by your love. I am amazed by your love. I am amazed by your love. I am amazed. I am, I am amazed by your love. Come on, everybody, say it. We're amazed by your love, oh God. Your love was so God It's part of my mess, oh Lord. Oh, oh, oh. How you turn my life around and you place my feet on solid ground. Everything about you is good and I
shall not perish but have everlasting life we thank God for the love we thank you Lord for your love wow see we're going to have a wonderful time tonight on Nightline I don't know about y'all but I am super excited for what God is going to do tonight we're going to be talking about love tonight and we we can't get enough of that love and in fact, Mr. Kenny Smith has got to sing Amazed by Your Love, and that's the love of God. We do have Pastor Sam and Lulu Rivera with me on the set tonight. And so again, we had her on here last year talking about her book, Helpmates and Hellmates. Well, tonight we're gonna get Pastor Sam's perspective on that book. So you need to call somebody. <laughs> And ask them to tune in. But before I do that, I do one. I did get them, them some little flowers for Valentine's. So I want to present that to them Aww. and let them yeah. know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. Thank you. Amen. Pastor Sam, I'm, I'm going to start with you tonight. <laughs> She's going to put me on the spot. On. Yeah, I'll put you on the spot tonight. How you doing? I'm doing good. I feel good, too. <laughs> Well, you're looking good. Thank you. It's the Lord. <laughs> it's the Lord. The Lord is keeping me young. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank God for that tonight because we need to be kept, don't we? Yes, mm -hmm. we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. so, Lulu, mm -hmm. you are looking so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> y'all look, look like y'all on, on a honeymoon, are you? We always are. <laughs> well, I have to ask every now and then to check and say, is the honeymoon over yet? <laughs> When I get grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> when she gets grumpy, yeah, yeah, was, is the honeymoon over with? <laughs> that's exactly what I ask her. I always say, is the honeymoon over now? <laughs> <laughs> so how long have y'all been married? Uh, it's feeling like 30 years, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's been about nine years. Nine years? Okay. Nine years. Oh, nine my God. Nine years, yes. Yeah. So it feel like 30 sometimes? Mm -hmm. Yes. It yeah. just, I just slide in like a real broken in shoe, you know. I'm, <laughs> it's just working good. <laughs> So, how did y'all meet? Wow, that's a, that's a loaded question. Oh, man. Uh, we Lula, met you through... tell me, how did y'all meet? <laughs> we met in high school. 
Yes, wow. we met in high school when we were, you know, teenagers. Was he yeah. the Romeo walking around the hall? No, or something? I, I was roaming the halls. I wasn't Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> he always says, I was, what is that you say? I, I, was, I got outstanding, <laughs> outstanding in the hall. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be invited to the principal's tea party because I was an honor student. Yeah. And he says he used to get invited to To what? the principal's office, but it wasn't for tea. <laughs> <laughs> what was it for? It was for other things. <laughs> <laughs> he was a troublemaker. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah, I grew up, though. The Lord changed me. Praise the Lord. So yeah. if he was a troublemaker, that <laughs> means that you love the tough guys, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Actually, you know, <laughs> I was not attracted to him. You were not? No, no. we were just buddies. Wow. We were just friends. We were just friends. That's all. Yeah. Just friends. And then we we never stayed in touch. Mm -hmm. um, 29 years later, uh, somebody was um, looking for everybody from class of 1980 yeah. to invite us to a uh, high school reunion in, Manha in New York. Mm -hmm. And so our mutual friends say, hey, have you heard? Have you seen this one? And he said, oh, it sounds familiar. And then he looked me up, and so we connected, and we were like, hey, I remember you. <laughs> and so we just, you know, chit-chatted and stayed in touch. We saw each other at the um, high, high school reunion. Mm -hmm. And so we just stayed in touch. Mm -hmm. And then I um, came to a point where I wanted to move, and uh, I ended up here. <laughs> and we dated for two and a half years. Yeah. Two and a half years. So he courted you, didn't he? Yes. He courted. Yes. courted. Well, you got to make sure yeah. it's grade A, because you know, <laughs> when you go to trials, you got to make sure the next time <laughs> I understand it's the right that. time. I mm -hmm. understand that. So what y'all been doing since COVID? Oh, we we wow. kept having our meetings, our mm -hmm. Wednesday night gatherings. Mm -hmm. You know, we stopped for a few months, mm -hmm. but you know, people wanted to come back, so we said okay. Yeah. So those that wanted to come back came back, and those that still didn't feel comfortable, did not come back, mm -hmm. but we continued our Wednesday night gatherings Yeah, at our house. Mm -hmm. so, so how y'all been doing, like Zooming or <clears throat> Skyping no, or no. just? People come over. Oh, they come over, mm -hmm. yes, awesome, yes, yes, awesome. Yes. Yeah, and it's been good, it's yeah. been good. People need it, people need, this. that's why this is so demonic, because people need people. Yes. People yes. need yeah. affection, people need touch. People need to talk. People yeah. need each other. Mm -hmm. So this is very demonic. Yeah. So so you and Pastor Sam, y'all been touching one another? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking. Well, if we are on we the subject, <laughs> listen, it's almost Valentine, right? So so we are on the subject of love. There yeah, has yeah. to be love. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, love is love demonstrates intimacy. That's right, how God that's is right. with us. Yeah. Right. You know, so we're talking about love, but God's also talk. in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it, just talk. If you love God, you got to love the people you're with. Okay. All right? Love the one you're with. <laughs> love the one you're with. There you go. There you go. <laughs> oh. Well, I told y'all mm -hmm. that we're just going to be open tonight. We're going to be yes. free tonight mm -hmm. because we want to help someone that's home. Amen. Uh, you've been married. How many years you say? Nine, Nine years. years. Feel Nine. like 30. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Well, you know, we know that divorce, the, the divorce rate is really high, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people are going through separations and stuff yeah. because of uh, COVID, being stuck at home, different things like that. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. y'all had a picture of you. Did you yeah. see my picture? <laughs> I look mesmerized. Look at that. We in love. He was intoxicated with love. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Getting a little a kitchen. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Who took that? I don't know, but somebody it was a, it was at a funeral too. Yeah, it was at a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> that picture was taken at a funeral? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Must have yeah. been somebody's father's funeral. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 But he's in heaven. We were oh, right. oh, we were celebrating. <laughs> we were celebrating. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, sad to see your loved ones go, but Right. You celebrate because you know they're in heaven. Right? There you go. And you know what? You know? He was suffering, so. Yeah. Yeah. He's so a better you, place. So we don't have to mourn like right. there's no hope. We yeah, know that those right. That's exactly Lord, right. You know, they're with the Lord. See, Amen. you just said something loaded. That a believer doesn't have to mourn and feel as if though they'll never be connected with those they love. We have hope. Yes. That's that love. It goes back. In, <laughs> there's going to be a river of love tonight. <laughs> We're going to be talking about love in so many different ways. And if there's anybody watching that feels lonely tonight, mm -hmm. they're going to feel that love. They're going to know that that love exists. Amen. It's not wow. superficial. Wow. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So how did you know that um, 
Lulu was the right one or vice versa? How well, did y'all know? You know, I'm, I'm good at, at discerning. You know, <laughs> I, I had to discern for a couple of years. But I, I kept an eye on the merchandise to make sure that it was, you know, genuine. And, uh, and one of the things that really affected me about her was her genuine love for the Lord yeah. and the love for the Holy Spirit. And then she loved to write. And so she would write about spiritual things and I would watch her conduct with her children. Mm -hmm. And it affected me in such a way that I thought, there's no way she should be left alone in this world. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, did she ever, um, did you ever write him in the love notes? Um, <laughs> Since you loved to write? Did I ever write you a poem? You wrote me I a think few, I wrote you yeah, a poem, you did. Right? You wrote me a poem. And he used to write me poems. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. He's good with words. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me hear something. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say smooth operator. <laughs> Actually, you sing like Elvis, so. No, what, what I he do is, what, like what I did was I inspire her. I try to inspire her and encourage her. You do? All yeah. the time. Yeah. You're supposed wow. to. You're supposed to encourage All the time. people you love. All the time. Yeah. That's amazing. <clears throat> That's why I tell people, Valentine is just a day. Yeah. I say, I get pampered every day. There you go. Every day. Yeah. So. There's a lot. There's, you know, you, you <laughs> actually, in nine years, you know, you, there's so much you learn about each other. Yeah. And when you love somebody, you really need to, to study and understand them so that you can understand that they're an individual. You can't force your love on them. They can't force their love on right. you. Wow. But it has to develop. Love mm. develops. Oh, it And does. matures. Yeah. You know, you go from that. That always, you know, I'm infatuated to really understanding what the love you profess for that person yeah. requires you do. Right. And, and you got to get it right. You know, I was listening to uh, this message today today about love, and, and, a, and a, the pastor was saying that you can tell your wife that you love her all you want, mm -hmm. but if you don't show it to Come her. Come on. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's what I see you doing showing her that you love her you know yep yeah and so and she shows you right yes all the time <laughs> mm -hmm. uh and i called and you last night and she was cooking she, oh, yeah, was, she, she made a mean it. you know puerto rican dish <laughs> it was out of this world that's, that's probably why the pounds are coming back on <laughs> but she was cooking for me and she had worked and you know and then when she's when she comes home from work I'll be cooking too so we exchange and we take turns serving mm -hmm. each other wow without really pushing the issues right. you know like well I'm tired I don't want to cook it's not that it's that I do because I care mm -hmm. okay so it has to have legs love has to have action <laughs> come on oh my god <clears throat> yeah that's beautiful yeah because so many people don't realize that yeah. you know they feel like uh, well, that's the woman's job to cook, or that's the woman's job to wash clothes. Right. That's the one, but y'all don't feel that way. No, well, I don't. Well, now when I was home okay. full time, I I felt that it was my job for my husband to be working all day, come home tired. It was only right that I, me being home, yeah. I should have a nice home cooked meal for him every single day, and I did. Wow. Yeah. I did. <laughs> yeah. You so. asking him? Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but now, now, now that I'm working, it's different. Now we yeah, both, yeah. Ha, you know, help each other in that area. Yeah. And yeah. since the kids are gone, it's just us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes we'll just grab something and, you know, that's it. But we have a guest in the home that's there all the time. He's there 24-7. Really? The Holy Ghost. There you go. And he's watching us and he's listening. So when we say we love, we have to put action behind that love and demonstrate it every day mm -hmm. and that's that brings peace in the home yeah no struggle no fighting no 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 there's no friction right. it's more like smooth like if you you skid you know you grease the skids yeah in marriage and everything is smooth so you don't have to disagree and argue and mm -hmm. fight right. you can always talk about what it is mm -hmm. see there's a lot i'm there telling you, know. you i was thinking what's she gonna ask me tonight <laughs> And you know, we oh, counsel. Oh, so, yeah, we're just not getting started yet. You want the dirt, huh? <laughs> no, I, I want, no, it's not dirt, it's, it's good. Well, there might be some dirt in there. <laughs> wow. So how, the, the Word of God says that how can two walk together mm -hmm. except yes. they agree? Mm, yes. So right. what is the spirit of agreement? Tell us, talk about that. 
The spirit of agreement is birthed by the Holy Spirit in a person. When you come together with your spouse, like when we first came together, I asked her point blank, how do you want me to be with you? What, what do you how do you want me to approach you? How do you want me to correct you when you're wrong, when there are issues? How do you want me to present the case to you so that I don't offend you? Mm -hmm. And I'll comply with what you want. Yeah. But this is how I want you to address me. Right. This is how I want you to mm -hmm. bring the issues to me. Right. And as long as we do this, we'll be able to communicate wow. freely right. without yeah. always being on a defense. Right. So uh, there's a communication that takes place. And we, we, we've been on the same page. We got on the same page mm -hmm. in finances, when it came to spirituality. And I, and I wanted her to love God more than she loved me. Because if a woman or a man loves God more than they love their spouse, they'll have plenty of love and respect and honor for their spouse. That is absolutely beautiful. I love that's that. Right. It goes back to your relationship with God. Yes. And that's why when we counsel couples, we're like, you need to get right with God. That, it's that simple. Yeah. Get right with God and then it will be right with both of you. Yeah. Well, I love it when Pastor Sam said there's three of you all in the home. Mm -hmm. It's the Holy Ghost is there too. Yeah. That's right. The Holy Spirit, the Holy mm -hmm. Anointing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he brings it all together. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can't leave him out. No, no. and he's love. Uh -uh. He's love. He's, he's, there's powerful love in there. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, tonight we are talking to Pastor Sam and <laughs> Lulu Rivera. And one of the things we're going to be talking about tonight is her book, Hellmates and Helpmates. Uh, but right now, we're getting ready to go to a song by Mr. Kenny Smith. He's going to be singing, I love you. Amen. Mm. <laughs> we love the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He is a great power. He's the greatest power. Thank you, Jesus. I think I got to say it just once more. But I really want to say it. A thousand more times That you've been good I can't hide it Through my expressions I love You, Lord Oh, yes I love you For what? you done I trust you and give you my heart since the day that I realized that you were right there yes I love you for what you've done You are my father that redeemed me. You took me out of bondage and set me free. And through all of my trials, I testify through my worship I love. That you were right there. I love you for what you done for me. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. For what you done for me. Pay the price for me. To praise you for dying for me, Lord. Yes, Lord. You pay the price, and I praise you, Lord. I thank you for loving me, Lord. You first love me, first, Jesus, and I praise you.
that you were right there since the day that I realized that you were right there. Oh my God, I told you, you know, whenever you see this balloon, that means that everybody at home is supposed to tell somebody in your house that you love them. We're going to spread the love tonight. Amen. And if you want to call in to say, hey, I love you, Pastor Andy, feel free to do that. And also, we have Pastor Sam and Lulu Rivera on with me tonight. And so if you have any questions about marriage or love, they are counselors. So they would love to hear from you. So call in tonight. We would love to hear from you. So Lulu is the author of a book, Hellmates and Helpmates, <laughs> Wives in the Bible. And again, she was on with me about a year ago. Pastor Sam was sitting in the audience. But tonight, he's going to be sharing his perspective on what hellmates and helpmates are. So Pastor Sam, yeah. this is your time. Okay. <laughs> Which one you want to talk about first? <laughs> Which one you want to talk about? I want to first? talk about the helpmate. Okay. <laughs> the helpmate is someone that God designed to come alongside her spouse, her partner, and help that person succeed. Mm -hmm. That person is supposed to complement their life. Mm -hmm. A helpmate is designed to wreck his life. Ooh. Uh, and it could be, you know, either way. You know, you could be a godly wife and uh, have a hellion on your hands. <laughs> What's and a hellion? It's a, it's a helpmate, but a male help, you know, helpmate. <laughs> a man that's supposed to help his wife, but instead he makes a life a living hell. Wow. And it's, it's, it's in the Bible. There are many husbands that are foolish, that make irrational decisions, that create conflict. And these people are designed in such a way that there's nothing that blesses you about them. Yeah. That's a helpmate. Okay. They bring hell uh -huh. to your life. Uh -huh. And then the helpmate is one who always brings God's presence and God's kingdom into the marriage because they know that they're there to build something yes. and not tear it down. Wow. Yeah. So I'm ready to preach. <laughs> <laughs> or preach it. Come on. <laughs> so when a, when a male, a man and a woman stand at the altar and they say for better or worse, you know, Shall we accept the words too? You know, yeah, we can accept the words, but here's the thing. The, it, this is how I view it. When you say for better, for better is that, okay, the good things are going to come, right? It's not all going to be bad, but there are going to be some things that come that may be worse that you have no control over. Hmm. That's something you can live with. Okay. But yeah. if you can, if you create hell and you make it worse, I don't think that's what we were talking about when we got behind that altar. Uh, you know, I think when we say for better or for worse is yeah. okay in, in good times and in bad times. Mm -hmm. But there are, you can avoid worse. You can avoid being bad. You can prevent it. We can. Yes. <laughs> All that person has to do is surrender their life to the Lord Jesus Christ and he'll transform that putrid heart. Mm -hmm. And they won't be, they'll go from hellmate to helpmate. It'll be <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> But see, the last time Lulu was here, though, she said that it's good to be a hellmate and a helpmate. She said it works out for the good. Yeah, she said what? you can learn Did something. You know yeah, I remember you said something like <laughs> you can learn something from the bad mates. Okay. No, I said that you can learn lessons from the what the bad pe from the bad. <laughs> yeah, you can learn <laughs> something. Helpmates. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. You can learn what not to do. Yes. You know. Yeah, there's a lesson in there. And, and you can avoid having a hellish marriage. Oh, okay. And, and so God will work on either marriage, and uh, either spouse. He'll work in the husband. He'll work in the wife. If they surrender their life to the Lord, they don't have to live in a hellish environment. Right. Uh -huh. You know, a lot of times it's just that people get married and they don't really know what they're getting into. Uh -huh. And they say all kinds of words and make all kinds of promises. But the reality is when you're really tested, yeah. we'll find out what you're really made out of. Wow. You know, so the hellmate doesn't have to stay in the hellmate mode. Uh -huh. they, can, they can move Choice. into a righteous <clears throat> way of living that will actually be uh, a, um, a blessing to the to the mate that they marry uh -huh. 
You know, you don't have to stay stuck. In other words, a woman can learn how to become a helpmate. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So they're not doomed forever, you know. <laughs> yeah. There is but some it's redemption. It's up to them. Some women refuse to change. Well, I, that's just the way I am. Yeah, yeah. That's that's dangerous when you hear that. Mm-hmm. And when after you get married and you hear that's just the way I am, yeah. take it or leave it, you're in trouble. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people feel that way. Mm-hmm. So you knew you knew I was like that before you married me, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> but see, that's but you one. said people can change, though. Well, if they right. want to. If they, they have to want it. to. They they have have oh, okay. Yeah, they have you know. to desire it. And the thing is, you can't serve God and not change. Mm-hmm. You know, then you really have to question, did you really get saved? Because yeah. when you get saved, he transforms you. You know, as you serve him, as you pray, as you read the word, as you seek him, you'll be changed. You'll be yeah. transformed mm-hmm. by the renewing of the word. So if you're not being transformed, that means you're not reading the word. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> you can't stay the same if you're hanging out with Jesus. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Something's got to rub off right. on you. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I know he's not going to get contaminated. Right. We have to have him rub off on us. Yeah. So if we profess to be godly people or Christians, then we need to start treating our spouses like Jesus treats That's the true. church. Right. He, right. he gives gifts for her. He gave his life for her. Mm-hmm. But you know, Pastor Sam and Lulu, a lot of times people think that because you are saved or because <clears throat> you are a pastor or you the head of a church that you don't ever go through any problems or right. situations in your marriage. Right. Is that true? Oh no. Whoever says that is really hiding the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of times people are afraid to be transparent right. yeah. with the reality of what they're facing. When the Bible says that we can turn to the Lord when we have adversity and troubles and that we can surrender all our cares to him, mm-hmm. you know, pastors, whoever you are, religious leaders, you're not, you're not exempt or immune from having uh, trials and afflictions. Okay. You will go through stuff, right. right? but you need to be grounded in the word of God mm-hmm. and have a relationship with God that's not superficial because he will help you through them. And it's not just pastors and religious right. leaders that right. go through stuff. Right. Everybody's going through Everybody. something. Something. Yeah. You know, there's an old saying that says people who live in glass houses can't throw stones. Mm-hmm. Well, it's true. We all have something to go through. Mm-hmm. Okay. How you how you come through is what makes the difference. Yeah. So, Lulu, when you penned this book, yeah. Hellmates and Helpmates, what were you trying to convey? I wanted to encourage women to be the helpmates that God ordained them to be. Okay. Because God created the woman with a purpose. Yes. And that was one of them, Mm -hmm. to be a helpmate. Mm -hmm. And so, how do you become a helpmate? Well, read my book. (laughs) (laughs) And learn, Mm -hmm. learn how to be a wife. Uh, Well, helpmate, I say helpmate because a wife, anybody can be a wife. Mm -hmm. But a helpmate, not every wife is a helpmate. Okay. Because a lot of them, Um, I mean, you know, it's amazing how in Proverbs it constantly uh, says uh, it's better for a man to be on the roof than to be with a nagging wife. It's better for him to do this than that. So it says it over and over. Mm -hmm. So why is it saying that? Yeah. Right? Right. It it keeps saying. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So obviously the woman needs to learn how to become a helpmate so she can help her husband in life. life. Yeah. So what the Word of God says that that the husband ought to love his wife mm-hmm. yes. right? as Christ loved the church yes. Right. Yes. and died and gave himself yes. for the church. Right. So right. how do we help the husbands tonight? We know the wife has a role to play. Mm-hmm. The husband have a role to play. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But if I were to come to you all tonight and someone needed to be counseled mm-hmm. and I say my husband and I we're having a problem with submission. Mm. He wants me to submit to him. Right. Is that a problem? Yeah, it is a problem because a lot of men <laughs> misunderstand what that word submit means. Right. Okay. You know, you I could buy a dog it. and teach that dog to submit. Mm. Your wife's not a dog. <clears throat> okay. You can't treat your wife. You, whatever your definition of submission is, I would first question, and we do this. We talk to the young people and, and many couples and we, we ask, how is your submission to God? Mm-hmm. You're expecting your husband or your wife to submit to you. Well, how are you submitting to God? Mm-hmm. And then once they have that correct, it'll, it'll, it'll help correct how they're supposed to submit 
one to another because it goes both ways. Okay. We're supposed to be subject one to another. <clears throat> a husband is not supposed to be Lord over his wife. Oh, okay. okay. There's one Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, some guys say I'm the king of my castle and I'm looking around thinking your castle's all in ruins. <laughs> okay. So we need to get it right. We major in the minors and minor in the majors. If we get submitted to God and we submit to Christ and we submit to his word, we can learn how to submit one to another yeah. right. and be benevolent. A husband's supposed to be benevolent toward his wife. Mm -hmm. That means that if, if, if a woman marries a man, according to the scripture, mm -hmm. she, there's some benefits that need to come from this guy. All right. Mm. She needs to benefit from that relationship. Yeah. If she doesn't, something's wrong. OK, if she feels like she's just been married to so she could be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen Woo. and fetch, <laughs> then she married the wrong guy. There's a problem there. Yeah. So men are supposed to treat their wives with respect and honor. Um, right. I always teach the, the younger couples, you better not treat people outside your house better mm -hmm. than you treat your husband yep. or your wife. Wow. Yep. You don't treat yep. the world kind and wonderful and then come home and treat your wife or your husband right. mm -hmm. like a dog. Right. You need to practice that love and that churchy stuff yeah. at home first. And when you proof it and make sure it works, right. then you try it out in the world. Yep. You can't get it the other way around. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Church begins at home. Mm -hmm. Especially the young couples that we, we counsel that where the guy wants to be in ministry mm -hmm. and we say, uh, She's your first ministry. Get mm. that right. Yes. And then yes. God will open doors for you yes. to be in yeah. other ministry areas. Yeah, and it's not nobody's perfect. None of us is perfect. Right. Nobody yeah. walks on water right. but Jesus. Right. And so when we get it right, we actually practice. You know, when you go to the doctor, they're practicing medicine on you, right? Uh huh. Yeah. They're trying mm -hmm. to get you well. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, when you're serving the Lord, you're practicing your Christianity on those you love. Yeah. Put it to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why there's peace at home. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's why there's I'm peace at home. This. Yeah, this, this is great teaching. Um, what about Lulu when, you know, like sometimes husbands may not go to church with their wives mm -hmm. and then the pastor get up and he'll say something. Then we'll go home and we'll tell our husband what the pastor said and mm -hmm. try to make him do. How is that? I mean, the Bible says to be an example to your husband so that you can win him over oh. with the gentleness mm -hmm. <clears throat> that the comes from being a, a Christian woman, yeah, a godly woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to win them over. Yeah. Now you beating them over the head with what yeah. the pastor said yeah. and you need to, <laughs> yeah. you can, it won't work. It yeah. never worked. So no, you can't do that. Yeah, you can't beat your husband yeah. up and go home and say this is what the pastor said. Right. Uh, let's see, let's let's see that wife live it out first. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. And there, have, I know many men that have come to the Lord because their wife was an example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so they said that they were under conviction because the Holy Spirit convicted them. Mm -hmm. But a husband should never bully his wife. Wow. Because if he does, he needs to be born again. Mm -hmm. And a wife should never bully her husband. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because she needs to be born again. Or manipulate him. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I've heard that every <clears throat> man has a king in him and he has a fool in him. Yes. Okay, because we talked about Nabal last time. Yes. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nabal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He How can we speak to the king in a man? Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> well, the way she speaks to me, she doesn't belittle me. She doesn't embarrass me in public. There you go. She doesn't correct me in front of people. I might say something as you get older. Sometimes your mind slips a little. But I, I, as, I might say something that might not be completely accurate. She'll correct me in privacy. Oh, okay. And never correct me in front of anyone yeah. to make me look bad. Yeah. We really need to speak life into the person wow. we love. Mm. We have to encourage them yes. and show them that we're there for them and demonstrate it. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't belittle the one you love. You don't make them feel like, you know, they're number two in the relationship. Wow. Mm -hmm. We try to outserve each other at home. Yeah. See, I look up to him. I, I look at him in his keenly role. Wow. So I respect him and I honor him because I know who he is in Christ. There you go. You see? And a lot of women don't do that to their husbands. Yeah. Which is not good. Yeah. Because sometimes I think we kind of overstep mm -hmm. our 
roles yeah. as a wife. Mm -hmm. And we still got to put him first. Mm -hmm. I have a friend that's, that's a pastor. Mm -hmm. She pastors at her church, but when she go home, she submits. Mm, is that, that's that's is, pretty powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, there's a lot. That says a lot about yeah. her. Yeah. She knows how to carry out her office. Yeah. And she knows how to perform in the authority God has given her as a wife. Amen. And she's to be commended for that. <laughs> well, we are talking to um, Sam Rivera and Lula Rivera, talking about hell mates and help mates, wives in the Bible. Right now, we're getting ready to go back to Mr. Kenneth Smith, and he's going to be singing, This Life is Worth Living. Amen. Mm -hmm. Why am I here? Facing many obstacles seem like I just can't win. Can I stop here? Thoughts will tell you cloud my judgment and bring fear. Then I sit back and I think where I've been truly is not where I am now. My future. It's brighter, cause I know in the end I win. Whether up, whether down, maybe happy or sad, gotta keep on moving. Well, I am, it's not the end, for I know this life is worth living. Cause where I've been, it's not where I am now. This life is worth living. Uh, why? Yeah. Gonna tell myself that I can make it And I can take it I won't stop here, no That's... Then I sit back And I think where I've been truly It's not where I am now My future gets bright I know in the end I win Whether up, whether down Maybe happy or sad Gotta keep on moving But I can miss nothing in For I know this life is worth living Cause where I've been Is not where I am now Whether up, whether down Maybe happy or sad Gotta keep Life is worth living. I can achieve my dreams. This life is worth living. New levels in this life. This life is worth living. I can conquer anything. This life is worth living. I can reach my goals. This life is worth living. With the Lord on my side. This life is worth living. Hey. This life is worth living. Gotta keep on moving But I can miss nothing in For I know this life is worth living Cause where I've been Is not where I am now Whether up, whether down Maybe happy or sad Gotta keep on moving But I can miss nothing in For I know this life is worth living Cause where I've been If you really believe that this life is worth living, just lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Wow. Well, see, we're having a wonderful time tonight. We're having a great discussion tonight with Pastor Sam and Lulu Rivera. And again, we're talking about her book, Hellmates and Helpmates, uh, Wives in the Bible. 
And so one thing that I want to ask them, um, how do you know that you are equally yoked with someone? First of all, you got to get that right at the very beginning. Okay. You don't wait three years and then ask, oh, by the way, are you serving God? Okay. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the Bible is clear that you should not be unequally yoked. Yeah. It tells us not to be. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people out there that believe, well, let me reel him in, and once I get him, then I'll convert him. Yeah. But do you think sometimes you can be a Christian and the other and the mate can be a Christian but still be unequally yoked? Yes. yes. Okay, that's <laughs> yeah, There's a lot. There's a lot in there. That's true. That's a loaded yeah. question. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> You're going to answer or you want me to? Good, you start. Well, there's, there's so much. That's why it's important to confirm that the person that you're yoking with is up to the long journey, that they are going to serve the Lord, too. Mm -hmm. They're not just going to ride your coattails. Yeah. You're not going to ride their coattails. And they're, you're, oh, you're both serving God and that you both surrender to yeah. Him. And He's going to alleviate issues and problems in the marriage. Wow. Because they're carrying yeah. Christ with them into the marriage. Mm -hmm. When you have a lukewarm husband and a woman on fire for God, it's going to create problems. Yeah. And when you have the, you know, the opposite, it's yeah. going to create problems. There's going to be friction. The, yeah. the enemy's going to use the weaker vessel, and it could be the husband or the wife, mm -hmm. the weaker mm -hmm. vessel to allow the enemy's activity in the home. Right. That's why it's important to check it. Like before you get on a plane, you got to yeah. check and make sure your luggage mm -hmm. is checked yeah. in. Yeah. You don't want to carry baggage into the relationship, mm -hmm. knowing that you should have at least done your homework. Right. Because you learn from your mistakes. And a lot of people, yeah. that, that doesn't mean that there isn't hope. There's yeah. always hope. Yeah. You know, Jesus Christ gives us hope. Mm -hmm. But you can avoid a lot of stuff. Wow. Mm -hmm. By making sure that that person is surrendered. When they're surrendered to Christ, there's nothing you can't overcome. Mm. Yeah. And it can also help to go through premarital counseling. I don't know if people even do that anymore. Right. But there was a time that people, especially if you belong to a church, there were some pastors that required you mm -hmm. to go through pre premarital counseling before they married you, yeah. mm -hmm. which was a good idea. Yeah. Because you learn so much, uh -huh. yes. you know. Um, I mean, a lot of people are concerned about their finances. Yes. Yeah. You know, a lot of people say, what's yours is mine and what's mine <laughs> is mine. <laughs> Well, no. Annie, the Bible says the, 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 the Bible says that. That's funny. <laughs> the Bible says that. I, I just he, see all the men in the United States that's, that are watching this grabbing their wallet. That that the Bible says that um, if you find a prudent wife, uh -huh. you found a, a good, good thing. thing. Okay. You know. So yeah. we encourage women to ask the Holy Spirit to give them prudence, mm. to give them wisdom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they, they're resourceful. Women who have wisdom and are prudent are resourceful. When I, when I yoked up with Lulu, I was blessed in, in so many areas wow. that, that there were parts of her spirituality and her commitment to the Lord that brought out good parts in me that I didn't know were there. Mm -hmm. So there was something about her spirit that wow. provoked my spirit mm. to do better. And yeah. so we learned from each other, but we were able to impart and encourage each other. And, and I've, I've actually prospered in many ways, not just financially, but in many ways I've prospered. Yeah. And so, you know, if you find a man with wisdom, that is so profitable mm -hmm. and so beneficial. That's why we pray for wisdom. The Bible says that if you pray for wisdom, God gives it liberally. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a limit on wisdom. So we need to pray for wisdom, folks. If you want to succeed in your marriage, you want to pray for wisdom. But, yeah. but being equally yoked yeah. produces evidence. Oh, my God. So when you, when you find out that you're equally yoked, yeah. you get blessed tremendously. Mm -hmm. When you're not equally yoked, you can feel the burden and the weight of that. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it affects your spirit. It vexes you. You know, you realize there's conflict. Mm. That is wonderful. And you know, when, when I got together with him, I thought I was spiritual until I connected with him. Mm -hmm. I thought, whoa, this guy, he took me deeper with God. He took me to greater levels with God, taught me more about 
being truly, truly spiritual where you're sold out 100%, yes. no compromise. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we challenge each other to do that. Yeah. That's amazing. And mm -hmm. we study the word together. Yeah. You know how many couples don't do that? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. A lot of couples that we counsel, they don't do that. They don't read the word together. They don't pray together. My husband and I, we try to do that every morning. We have Amen. Bible study together. Amen. Mm -hmm. We pray together and we learn together. Yes. Uh, and the Bible also says that the older women yes. are, are to teach the younger women yes. how to love their husband. That's what that, I wrote that, about. You wrote, That's what I wrote about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so how yeah. can we do that, Lulu? I mean, and you know, and age, when you say older women, that don't have to necessarily mean age. Yes. It's a lot of young, mature women. Yeah. <laughs> that have You're learned right. so much. You're right. Yeah. So how do we teach the younger women how to love their husbands? Women have to um, keep in mind that there are a lot of young women around them that are watching them. Okay. Okay, so you have to remember to be a role model at all times. Yeah. Because people are watching you, mm -hmm. whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's in church, at work, uh, wherever, mm -hmm. or whatever you're doing, they're watching you. So be an example, not only in private, but in public. You know, a lot of women act a certain way in public, and then they act a certain way in private. You can't do that. Yeah. Right. You know, you have to respect your husband at all times. Right. You have to love your husband at all times. You know, um, the way to be a role model around uh, the other women, I th in church is obviously the easiest place because that's where we, we get together and we have community yeah. in church. Yeah. And so get together with some women, you know, uh, invite them over. You yeah. know, have chit chats with them and, and say, hey, let's talk about, you know, a relationship. So let's talk about marriage and, and what is it that you're, you're um, struggling, struggling with? with. Yeah. 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 And then talk about Cultivate that. Cultivate the them. soil you're in. Yeah. yeah. Be intentional with the people yes. you're around. Yes. And we've lost that in the churches. Yes. You yeah. know, we, yes. we do religion well, mm. but these people leave the churches on Sunday, go yeah. home, oh, and they gosh. deal with the same conflicts every, every day. And mm -hmm. a sermon isn't going to fix that. Mm. We need to be proactive. We need to encourage the young men yeah. to be good husbands. We need to get into their stuff like we used to get into their stuff. Wow. You know, well, yeah. we don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to mess with anybody's mm -hmm. personal life. Yeah. Well, tonight we have been blessed to have a fireside chat with Lulu Rivera and her beautiful, handsome husband, Sam Rivera. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been talking just a little bit from her book, Hellmates and Helpmates, Wives in the Bible. And so, Lulu, where can we find your books? My books are available both ebooks and paperbacks are available in Amazon. Uh, the ebooks are also available through Apple and Google Playbooks. Um, the hard, paperbacks are also available through my website. Um, and Walmart.com also has my ebooks. Mm -hmm. So good. So we are, we are blessed to have you with us tonight. You know how time flies when I we know. have a yes, wonderful time. Yes, we have fun. Yeah, yeah, so you all are open for other people to come to you for counseling, right? Right. Yes. So I said, when I hold this balloon up, that means that somebody at home <laughs> is supposed to tell somebody that you love. We're not just celebrating Valentine, we're celebrating love. Yes. Mm -hmm. The love of God. So what did I tell y'all I wanted y'all to do when I held this balloon up? To kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that sweet? <laughs> Was that it? What? Was that a kid? Oh, I could have done better than that, but she got I lipstick got on. <laughs> oh my God! So tonight we are, we have been blessed to have uh, Minister Kenny Smith as our musical guest tonight, and yeah. he and his beautiful wife is going to be on the set with us on the second hour. Mm -hmm. So we definitely want you to come back and hear about their marriage and what God is doing in Amen. them, for them, Amen. through them. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. So Sam and uh, Lulu, thank you. You're very thank welcome. Thank you for coming and thank sharing you. tonight what God is doing for you, through you, and around you. And thank Pastor you. Sam, I had said that I wanted you to close us out in prayer tonight yes. and just pray for all the married yes. couples and even the single people. Pray yes. for them as well. Mm. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. For Father, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. 
that you touch the single cup, the singles that are looking to marry, yes. that you give them yes. wisdom and insight and understanding father and open their eyes to see that they cannot be unequally yoked yes, father God. i pray for the couples who are struggling right now father and going through situations and circumstances and i ask you that you bless them that you open their eyes that you give them wisdom and understanding yes, and that you just lead them lord and help them, Father, to understand that you're there for them and that they can turn for, take, they can turn to you to have all their issues and problems resolved, Father, because you're the problem solver and you love them very much. So, Lord, we thank you right now. We ask you that you just let your Holy Spirit touch their hearts, Father. And if there's someone that's unsaved, Lord, we ask you that you just bless them, yes, open their hearts, give, grant them the gift of repentance, yes, and God. allow them, Father, to open their hearts to accept Jesus so that they can understand what true love is, Lord. Yes, God. We thank you, Father. Thank you, in the mighty name of Jesus you, Christ, Lord. we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Thank you, Lord.